Namaste angels, I'm here um, somewhat briefly because I came to give you one message specifically. I was writing notes uh, so that I could give you all of the message I had been give, messages I had been given today. Um, you know, all that I could remember. I was trying to write everything down and recall them all. And then suddenly I saw, heard 1219. I think it was 12:19 on the clock, um, and I just felt that I had to get up. I was I was being told to get up right then and there, and come to my computer and look up Bible verse 12:19. Not sure whether I'm in Old Testament, New Testament, I don't know. But when I got here, um, Chronicles 1 was open, and I had been reading something earlier you know, somewhat in preparation, I think, for what I was, you know, given to do later. And I spent the day out. Today was Saturday. Well, the day that I started all this was Saturday the 11th, um, you know, beginning in the wee hours with still not fighting, but um, working diligently, diligently with the video that I finally put up today. Um, that I had initially recorded the morning of the 10th, um, which was Dee's birthday, by the way, and the day that Now You See Me 2 opens. I did go to see it, uh, a 7 o'clock show with my daughters. Um, so I won't tell you about it, but maybe one day after the majority of us have seen it, or whoever plans on seeing it has seen it, um, we can talk about it then. I will say that the um, character... Danny, um, who they all also call Atlas, is back, of course, because um, nothing happened to him in the last one. Um, but just to make note of those names, his names, since we've discussed both of those um, a few times, I believe. Uh, anyway, so I get up, I come to the computer, Chronicles 1 is open, I start looking at it. It doesn't look familiar. I'm pretty sure that's not what I was reading earlier. Um, and rather something that Spirit put there that I was to read and, of course, share with you. But as I read to the bottom of that page to try to get an understanding of uh, what it was about, because I had op definitely open Chronicles, um, and I saw that a lot of it was just, like, names. I think it was names that Enoch or Archangel Metatron had written down, sort of like a genealogy uh, of the world at the time, as he knew it at least. And so I, I was like, I can't read them these names, you know, that's, that doesn't seem effective. Um, you know, and, and surely they can look them up if they want to know the names of all the people of all the tribes, uh, you know, in the Bible or online, as I did, a Bible online. I'm actually using, let me tell you the site, because it's United States Conference on Catholic Bishops www.usccb.org but all I did was type in books of the Bible and this was one of the links that clicked that came up and I clicked on it I like dot orgs um, typically <laughs> but you know perhaps more so than dot coms I don't know why or dot edus I like those I don't know <laughs> again I don't know why um, so anyway today has been filled with nines, elevens, eights, and thirteens, uh, alone and in conjunction with one another in varying ways. Um, I had a good day. I spent it nurturing myself, doing a lot of things by myself. No children, no, you know, friends, no anybody. Uh, in preparation for my birthday, I thought I was going out tonight. I decided not to, but that's not part of what I came to get on here to talk to you about. Um, but I decided not to, and maybe I'll go out tomorrow instead. Um, anyway, I did get my nails done. And this side. I said people are probably gonna think I'm a lesbian, but I don't care. Um, it was really more so for the raise 
um, for me than pride, but you know, I'll take pride too. That's cool. So anyway, um, this morning I had tweeted and I don't tweet often, but I tweeted and I opened my Twitter just now so I could try to find it and quote it, quote myself properly. Okay. So it was, my phone was at 85%. That's 13. It was 238. That's 13. Um, it was 78 degrees. I'm sorry, 71 degrees. That's eight. Um, my phone had updated at 1043. That's eight. It updated on 611. That's 17, which is eight. So you get the idea. <laughs> Um, so I tweeted, you know, hashtag 13 and hashtag eight equals hashtag St. Germain and hashtag Lady Portia, hashtag the violet flame and hashtag justice, um, which is a true statement. It's just unusual for me, um, not only have to have tweeted, but that, but it is very true. Um, 13 is associated with, with St. Germain and you know perhaps he's a Michael also or you know he doesn't have to be but 13 is associated with him and 8 or Justice is associated with Lady Portia his twin flame uh, St. Germain being the Ascended Master who shows up to us uh, quite often in the Ascended Master deck my Dorian Virtue Ascended Master um, cards holding the seal of Solomon and is also from whom I read uh, or, or who that channeler I did post her name and a link to her page and all that but I don't recall her name right now um, but that's who she was channeling who explained to us um, and now I'm talking about St. Germain that is uh, St. Germain explained to us the difference between soulmates, twin souls, and twin flames. Um, and told us, went on to tell us further to, you know, what I and, you know, some others um, have been saying for as long as we've been saying it, you know, that's at varying amounts of time too. Again, I've only been on YouTube for three months. As of yesterday, the 10th, that was my three month anniversary. Um, but that the Ascended Masters and Archangels are here to, you know, gather their children and to gather themselves, their reincarnations, um, and lead, lead them into the, you know, new promised land and cleanse the earth of evil. My name on Twitter is Queen of Swords 99. I have been thinking about this earlier too. Like it's so funny, the names, not only are our names that our parents gave us connected to, you know, who and what we are, but the names that I gave myself, and then I'm sure many of you have given yourself these pseudonyms, so to speak, um, are as well. Like Queen of Swords, I thought I was just taking that on because I'm a Gemini slash Aquarius. But it, it's so much more to it than that. It's about the precious metals, the universe. God wanted me to choose that name because of the precious metals, silver, platinum. And again, on Twitter, I'm Queen of Swords 99. So. Whereas I would have thought that was a random name that I had chosen for myself, and I'm not just there on Twitter um, with Queen of Swords 99. That's also the blog talk that I still haven't done a podcast, but I still I continue to pay for that monthly, uh, that radio time. And there's somewhere else. Um, Patreon, I believe. I'm also Queen of Swords 99. So... You know, that name was given to me. I didn't really choose it, which is fine by me. I was just thinking about, you know, how interesting that is. 
And then I started thinking 99, okay, 18, 9. I'm Queen of Swords, 9. I'm 9 again. And then, what happened next? Well, I guess what happened next was probably what I was writing down notes about to talk to you another, about another time. I will tell you that I had woken up or been awakened sometime this morning um, by, you know, God telling me to get up because a file, again, that I had recorded sometime in the day, early on the 10th, had finally completed uploading to Dropbox, you know, some 10, 11 hours later. Now, I didn't trip about it. I went about my day on the 10th, and I had a nice day. And again, I went to the movies, you know, with my girls um, last night to see Now You See Me Too. You know, so it was a good day. I'm not complaining. Um, it was a day that the Lord had made. Um, so I, I'm going to rejoice and be glad. Um, and I don't even remember what I was telling you about this. Oh, about the number of times, number of hours. But yeah, the dark energies were definitely trying to work against me and, you know, and stop me from getting up that Jesus Walks 3 video as they've been trying to get me from, prevent me from getting this one that I'm recording right now up to you. Um, this is my third attempt because again, I don't want to make it a movie. I want to send it right up as I feel I've been instructed to by God. So I don't even want to take up too much time telling you other stuff, but I just wanted to sort of preface it and have it make some sense. So at that time when I was woken up, I also had what I'm pretty sure was the mathematic formula to why um, 12 is the cosmic energy, but I don't remember what it was. What I did retain, is I don't feel is it even close, but it's probably in part what had led me to this e mathematic equation. So I'll read you what I did remember of that moment. Um, zero, God force. Wait. God force zero plus creator slash trinity three equals creator slash trinity three. That's the three in 369. Creator slash Trinity three, or Isis, plus Creator slash Trinity three, Osiris, equals divine love slash divine partner slash love, capital L, six. Universal energy, six. And then I have universal energy slash divine union slash cap love capital l which god is love the universe is love six plus universal energy divine union love capital l six equals 12 cosmic energy Um, divine, unconditional love, light, and truth. Twelve, or cosmic energy of twelve, divine, love, light, and truth, plus Christ, one, equals thirteen. So that's something to it. But again, I remember having a mathematical a full mathematical equation in my head, like E equals MC squared, like I was gonna, you know, and I'm, I, I feel that it'll come back, so I'm not, even, I'm not worried about that either. Um, and how I lost it in part was that I was focused on, I was, first of all, I was asleep. You know, this was being awakened at I don't even know what hour, getting up, you know, stumbling around and coming to the, you know, seeing something on my computer and saying, oh, the upload is finally done Okay, let me download it now. This is what I have to do. I have to upload it to Dropbox and then download it to my download folder, then move it to whatever 
you know, hard disk I want to move it to or leave it in the download fo folder and then go to make the movie. So there's a whole long process to this whole thing, you know, if I, if it gets lengthy. And if it gets lengthy, it gets lengthy. I mean, I, I'm, I have to repeat what, you know, I, I feel I'm being told to repeat. So, again, okay, that's the preface to why I'm here right now. Something else um, that I'll just throw into this, LV, um, I've come to know are Da Vinci's initials. And so I have LV equals Da Vinci's initials slash the Da Vinci code, Mona Lisa, LV and I. So he wrote his, it's not LV and I, the letters, it's LV, he wrote his initials in the Mona Lisa's eye. Um, I've also come to realize that LV stands for Leviticus, the book, of, the book of Leviticus in the Bible. So that's something else that we'll have to go over. But again, in this one, I just want to tell you what I feel God was telling me to tell you right now. Um, I also mentioned, before I do that, okay, I, I'm going to read this thing. I went today to get my tattoo removed. Now, I went there first. I said, fill in the banner, you know, where the name is. And the guy said, well, I guess he wasn't, he wasn't one that does tattoos, I guess, actually. I don't, I don't know. Maybe he, maybe he does, but he wasn't doing that today. Whatever the case may be. He just, like, received me. He was, like, the receptionist, sort of. Um, oh, I have to tell you about going in. So going in, I'm see, I, I parked my car, and at first I didn't, the place where I had pulled over, turned out there was no parking there on Saturday at that hour. So I'm like, hmm. Oh, I got to go back even further. All right, so I'm driving to St. Mark's place because I figured that was a safe and good place, you know, the universe would be happy about that area, me getting my um, tattoo taken care of there because St. Mark. And then as I was driving, something said, no, like Google tattoo places. So I do, like four come up that are in the area. Um, the closest one to me is something line, like fishing line tattoo. And I said, oh, I'm sure that's safe for me. Um, well, then I'm like, well, maybe. Then the next one was a little further away. It was called King's Avenue Tattoo. And I said, that's where I belong. So I like turned and went in the other direction to get to this King's Avenue Tattoo. And I go to pull over to park. I see that I can't park where I'm about to, um, not on a Saturday. So I'm like, hmm, was I wrong? Does the universe want me to take off my tattoo? I'm, I feel pretty strongly they do. And was I wrong about this place? I don't think so. King's, King's, tattoo, King's Avenue tattoo seems to be where I belong. So, you know, the universe will give me a parking space if I belong here. It always does. So I go like two, three blocks further and then make a right. So this is all random. I end up making a right on Broom Street. Um, in lower Manhattan, um, off of the Bowery, which is famous or had been famous in New York for all the lighting companies that were there, but many have closed due to like the big box stores, the large corporations put them out of business and they continue to close. Um, so anyway, I turn and on Broom, there's a free parking space, you know, so I don't even have to put any money in a meter or anything. So I'm like, ah, oh, this is my space from the universe. I park my car, I get up. I get out, there's this girl playing with her sneakers. She has on black leather Chuck Taylors, high tops. I had on white leather Chuck Taylors, low tops. And so I noticed, I'm like, oh, Chuck Taylors. And I'm like, Chuck, Charles Taylor, he probably sewed. Taylors used to sew, and people used to be named after their profession. Chuck Taylor, his family was probably, you know, in the tailoring business. And then, I go, um, uh, oh, then I'm reminded that at my old job with the, it used to be owned by the father, and then like the two sons took over, and one of the sons brought this guy in that completely, in my opinion, and the opinion of many, many, many others, um, and I would say the majority opinion since 75% of the company ended up being laid off. Um, this guy completely tanked the company. His name was Richard. So I'm like, Richard, Dick, 
oh, I said yesterday that maybe this is why dick, you know, people, we, we call people dicks. Um, I'm like, why do people named Richard call themselves dicks? Well, he is a dick, though. And then I remembered that right away I said that he reminded me of the story, The Emperor's New Clothes. And I see I'm probably going to have to do the reading that God wanted me to do separately, but he must want, want me to tell you all this, too. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. It wouldn't be coming out of my mouth. Um, I said he, remind, he reminded me of the story, The Emperor's New Clothes. That is the story of a tailor. A tailor that sewed this king nothing. The king was naked, but he believed, you know, his ego was so huge, he believed what this tailor was saying, like, this is the most fabulous thing in the world. No one else has it. You are the only one. I have made this custom for you. Put this outfit on. The king had on no clothes. And that always reminded me of my boss, you know, the one brother who brought this guy in, who we see now is a, or I see now is a demon, you know, is the devil, um, one of his forms. Um, yeah, it reminded me of that. So then I get to the tattoo place and I'm standing in front before I go in and a guy is approaching me so like I'm standing facing the tattoo place so I'm facing west he's walking north so he would have walked you know up and past me I noticed on his t-shirt like over his heart was like a number eight not large uh number eight it was a blue t-shirt with a red white and blue number eight and I said oh that must be some kind of sports shirt as he walked past me I could see that the name on the back was Dempsey so I guess that's a player that I'm not familiar with because I don't get to watch tv anymore um and the number eight, maybe Yankees, because it was a blue t-shirt. Anyway, so I'm like, oh, eight again. I had just made that post earlier, the tweet. Eight equals justice equals Lady Portia. Um, so then I'm still standing there and there's a store, I think it was called Nudie Jeans, that's adjacent, attached uh, to the, t the building the tattoo parlors and tattoo is a walk up you, you go in there's a staircase there nothing else there and you go straight up to the second floor that's where the tattoo parlor is um, but this other place was ground level all glass and I could see people in there and I see this guy walk past with a shirt that says 77 and I'm like oh I guess I belong here and I look at the address of the tattoo parlor and it's 188 and I'm like oh 17 8 okay yep I belong here and I go in uh, I talked to the one guy, he's like, maybe, some, maybe Chuck can give you something more interesting than just painting it, painting it in. Let's wait for Chuck. And I had just had that thing, that whole thing with Chuck, Charles, um, you know, same person who clothes, Charlie Brown, hey Chuck, you know, Peppermint Patty called him Chuck. So I smiled because I'm like, okay, I'm getting a guy named Chuck. Um, the guy with whom I was dealing his hair was sort of reddish, auburn. He had a long, thick beard. Um, so I'm, I'm smiling to myself about that too. And uh, Chuck comes out, he's a redhead, you know, as I expected, anticipated, and very, very nice. And so, yeah, he starts telling me all the different things he can do. He can do, you know, flower. He can actually cover up the whole tattoo. And I'm like, okay, even better. Um, and um, I'm like, do that. And he's like, well, what do you want? I'm like, whatever you, you know, feel, we'll cover it up and, you know, be cool. And he's like, oh, I can put flowers and butterflies. I'm like, okay, I like flowers and butterflies. That'll work. Let's do that. So he was going to do it right there. And he starts showing me the stuff in the book. And, oh, while I was waiting for him, I had been sitting there thinking, I really wish I could just get a cobra with wings. I really wish I could just get a cobra with wings. Maybe another time I'll come back, you know, and get it on the other arm or my back or something. And um, I'm flipping, so now fast forward to where he's here showing me this book. I'm flipping through and I see a cobra. And I'm like, this is really what I want with wings. And he's like, wow, that's cool. We could do that. He was like, that would take a long time. I'm like, I don't care. He's like, yeah, I could put that here. Let me give you an appointment instead. So that's why I didn't get it done today. Um, let me give you an appointment instead to come back and we can either smart small or whatever. So he worked up something where he was going to do like three hours worth of work on me the next time I go. Um, I am committed to going. I had to put down a $200 deposit 
I gave them my debit card as opposed to cash. And so I guess they have to charge tax even on the deposits. It was 209, so 11. Um, so the whole time I'm like, okay, yeah, this is what I'm meant to be doing. Um, my original date he was gonna give me, I think, uh, to for the appointment was five. So I'm like, okay, yeah, life altering change. And then when I said I preferred a different day, not because of that, but be just because of my schedule, um, I I either ended up on another five or eleven. I don't recall. Um, something else was it? He was saying uh, if you. If you cancel the appointment, they charge 50%. I'm like, I won't be canceling the appointment. You know, if you don't come or whatever. I'm like, I'll be coming. And he's like, yeah, people that want to get something covered up typically do actually show up. So I guess I was meant to tell you guys that because I said that was probably something I should do um, based on the universe, you know, the, what I know to normally be the expectations it has of us. Um, and therefore I'm doing it because again, I try, you know, I try my best to do always what I feel the universe is telling me I'm supposed to do or it wants me to do. And I hadn't even asked how much the thing was going to cost the tattoo. Um, finally, right before I left, I'm like, um, cause he said, we charge an hourly rate. I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. So then I told him he said three hours. So I'm like, well, what is the, um, hourly rate not that I really care because I don't really care because the universe is going to pay for it because they want me to do it right um so that's how that works you you know it's prayer with works I'm going to do my part the universe does its part that's the law of attraction that's the way it goes you know um that's how God's promise works so he's like 225 so essentially I'm paying you know nominally nominally $700 for my new tattoo, um, or if I want to be exact about it, six, wait, 225, 225, 225, 675, uh, 13 and five is 18 is nine. <laughs> so I'm back to nine again. Um, and if you guys feel that the universe is telling you to do anything, as we discussed many, many, many times, Please do it yourself as opposed to, you know, five happening or tower happening or chariot having to happen. You know, not that those are bad energies. It's just like a reminder that we didn't do what we were supposed to and we could have received our blessing a lot sooner, but we blocked ourselves from it. Okay, yeah, I definitely feel I was supposed to tell you all that, although I probably would have told you much longer if I was including it in something else. So maybe that's the purpose of this too. All right, I will be back May, let's see what I wanna to say to you guys before I close this out. May the divine creator, divine source, unity consciousness, divine temples, Akashic elders, galactic federation of light and all beings of love, light, truth and wisdom continue to shield you and protect you and to uh, remove and release all any and all barriers between you and the light and your highest purpose of love, light, truth, and wisdom, divine love, light, truth, and wisdom in the highest interest and good of all beings. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Namaste, angels. I'll be back.